Hello everyone. So today I wanted to talk about the dystopian nature of TikTok and the current landscape of the app and how society and TikTok have bled together in a very uncanny, if you will, kind of way, a dystopian kind of way. I think we've been talking about the way that the internet and social media has affected society for a few years now, but right now it seems like we're at like an interesting like tipping points of some sort and a lot of the behavior I see on TikTok I feel like are exemplifying an interesting turn in society and the way our brains work and how we view entertainment, how we view ourselves, and the thinning line between our internet personas versus who we are in real life and actual reality. Skip the intro, yeah. So one of the more recent viral TikTok trends that in a way has kind of come and gone already is the tube girl trend. So there is a girl named Sabrina there was, like she's no longer with us. Um, there is a girl named Sabrina Bassoon and she blew up on TikTok for making these very confident supermodel-esque videos where she would lip sync to songs while on the train in the London underground. So since her videos have gone viral, it's now become a trend, the tube girl trend, where people are filming themselves in the same style as her on public transportation. The video itself, Sabrina's videos itself, aren't what's like interesting to me. It's the trend that has followed up from her videos going viral and what that says about <laughs> society because really i mean she obviously killed it in her videos it's very hard to make videos like that you know she's got to get the angles right and the movements and look good and she's flipping her hair while also lip syncing knowing the words to these songs while on a moving train and she's doing all this in front of complete strangers. So that is like a skill, something that I definitely couldn't do. I mean, I guess I could if I really tried, but I uh, like that seems like a lot of effort. And also, I'm just not the type of person to do like those kinds of videos on public transportation. But I think what is interesting about this becoming a trend is how people have interpreted it. Because I don't know if this was her intention, but it's become this kind of like confidence movement like oh you know who cares what people think who cares about being perceived like you're never going to see these people again so just you know be confident and do this thing and it'll liberate you make you feel free i definitely don't think there's anything wrong with her i thought her video was hot and cool i think the trend that took over after was a little strange wherein you call confidence actually just sacrificing normality like disrupting everyone's ride on the subway to get your TikTok and not caring what any of them think about you because it'll look really cool on the internet. Essentially the idea of caring more about your online persona and clout than how you're perceived in the real world. For a while now, TikTok has plunged into the discourse of being cringe. Some practice cringe comedy, while others propose TikTok as a way to embrace the cringe within us all. The tube girl effect seems to be a byproduct of this, essentially being proposed by followers as a way to embrace confidence and subvert social perceptions. It's also in line with a very online concept often supported by those of TikTok, the idea to not take anything really too seriously. I totally embrace the I am cringe but I am free mentality. I think everyone one should live by that and also you know it's like being cringe or being embarrassed is a choice right like for the most part you can choose to be embarrassed about things there are some things where you know one person may find it embarrassing and another person may not even think twice about it for example I sing out loud all the time now I'm a singer so I'm not like as embarrassed if someone hears me singing because it's not necessarily bad but like singing out loud or like at the gym I'll like dance to my music a little bit and like vibe and I know people might be seeing me and being like oh that's weird but like I don't care <laughs> going alone to dinner some people may find that embarrassing personally I do it every week and so I think it's a great thing to embrace is the idea of being cringe or embarrassing or better yet not choosing to be embarrassed by something and so with the tube girl trend people are saying like oh you know if you're truly confident if you truly don't care what other people think then you can do this trend and you should do it and if you don't want to do it and you think it's cringy then that means that you're just too caught up in how people are perceiving you which I don't think is it at all honestly I don't think the tube girl trend is is like 
just like the peak of confidence. It definitely takes a certain level of confidence to do something like this, but when I think of confidence, I don't think of this kind of grandiose, overt, in-your-face demonstration of confidence. If anything, it's a reverence and it's a lack of consideration for the people around you. In society, we have a social contract, right? We all have this unspoken rule and agreement to behave a certain way in public, especially in enclosed spaces like public transportation. Now, I live in New York City. I go on the train every single day during rush hour, during all hours of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, after like 10 p.m., maybe not so much. When this trend was at its peak, I would sit on the train and try to imagine watching someone do that or me doing that. And it just seems so outside of the realm of normalcy and what is appropriate. It's just like, I can't even like imagine doing that. I'm surprised I haven't seen anybody doing it, honestly. When I look at the people around me who are trying to get to work or with their kids or whatever, it's just like, it seems like an unnecessary thing to do. And sure, like, people do crazy, crazy things on the train. So essentially I can imagine no one really caring, honestly, or if they do care, they're just not gonna say anything and avoid eye contact, which is what New Yorkers do. Like I see people pissing, shitting and vomiting, bleeding out on the train all the time and no one bats an eye and you kind of just do you. So I think me dancing on the train is not the worst thing a New York commuter would see <laughs> in their day. But I think TikTok has this kind of warped idea of what confidence is because people be like, yeah, do the tube girl trend, but then they can't even see a movie by themselves because they have too much anxiety of being alone in public. So it's like, what are we, what's the, what's really the message here? What are, what are we trying to accomplish, I guess. And I don't mean to like judge anyone who does a trend. Like if you did it and it was fun, like amazing, probably not the worst thing someone's seen on their commute on the train. I think it's cute and fun, but I think there's kind of a dystopian element to this idea that acting a fool in public or doing something that is perceived as embarrassing in public for internet clout is odd because at the end of the day it's like yeah it's confidence but you're there's a payoff there's a there's an incentive of going viral on tiktok there's no incentive to going out to dinner by yourself or going to a concert by yourself you're just doing it to do it i mean i guess you could flex on social media if you wanted to and maybe that'll get some likes but this is a trend that obviously is getting people a lot of likes and views and is boosting their TikTok pages. And so when it turns into an act that is for social media rather than for yourself, that's where I think the idea of confidence gets skewed and kind of misrepresented. Like I said earlier, like I couldn't imagine myself doing this on the train here in New York. It's because I've agree to the social contract. I don't think it's in my best interest or others' best interest to break that social contract just for potential TikTok likes. I care more about how I'm perceived in public than how I'm perceived on TikTok to a certain extent. I mean, I do social media for a job, so obviously I care about how I'm perceived online, but I still have, you know, care, consideration for those who are in front of me in real life. And although, yeah, you probably will never see these people ever again, I still think it is completely normal and fine and doesn't mean you're insecure if you want to preserve your reputation in that moment, if you want to protect how you are perceived in that moment, because that's real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Disrupting the peace or unnecessarily bringing attention to yourself isn't the end all be all when it comes to confidence, like at all. And again, I just want to reiterate, this is pretty harmless. Uh, out of all of the trends online that revolve around doing abnormal things in public, like this isn't hurting anybody. In a way, it's kind of like flash mobs, just with one single person and a phone. Like on the worst scale of public pranks or trends for the internet is like, I don't know, remember when that guy, Sam Pepper was like groping women in public for YouTube videos? Like that's actually something that should be condemned. This however is more so just like a, huh, this is an interesting behavior that people are doing and I think represents something deeper, you know what I mean? But for real though, like there is kind of like a, a an encouraged disconnect from you and the rest of society, the rest of the world, your direct in real life community. There's a clear disconnect that's happening when people are doing trends like this. And you can actually see that happening in real time. There was a video of Sabrina 
at some event and she was doing the trend and someone famous walked past and it was Penn Badgley. Penn Badgley walked past and she like didn't even see him because she was too busy doing the trend. No, but did anyone else see this video of the tube girl at the Valentino show and think it was like weirdly dystopian that nobody is acknowledging her? Like that is literally Penn Badgley. Like and this is absolutely zero hate towards the tube girl because the tube girl is a sleigh but I saw someone else do a video that like the whole tube girl movement is just like a massive signifier that we are starting to really value the importance of our virtual persona a lot more than like our physical persona. This seems to have caused some disillusionment amongst fans as it leads to a realization of the inherent disconnect involved in this trend. In fact, in an interview with Stay Tuned NBC, Bassoon explains, I honestly didn't know he was walking by me. I was just so concentrated. Like when I do these videos, I genuinely am in my own world. The incident sparked online discussion over what participation in the making of these TikToks really mean. By doing this trend, you know, you're on your phone, you're focused on doing the moves and the lip syncing and stuff, and you have completely cut your mind off to what is around you, your surroundings, people around you, which, you know, potentially could be bad, whether it's for your safety or the safety of others around you. The safety thing is, is more of an extreme example, but just in general, although it's just one trend, I think it's a kind of a drop in the bucket of a larger issue around people disconnecting from real life for the internet, for internet clout, for internet props, over making real connections in your community and interacting with those around you. You're disregarding those in your real life to impress fake people online, or at least people you'll never meet. And I think the more and more this behavior is rewarded, the more we're going to see this happening. I mean, this girl's gone so viral, she has gotten some amazing opportunities because of her videos. Tube girl just walked the Christian Cowan show at Paris Fashion Week. And so I think when people see her getting that kind of success, they're like, oh, well, I want that too. You know, what can I do to push the envelope? What can I do to impress the internet so I get these real life benefits? Because likes are great, but we now know that likes can earn you money and clout and fame. So there's a serious incentive when it comes to these kinds of online trends. And maybe you guys may think I'm being dramatic for saying it's dystopian, but I really do think it kind of is a little bit. And again, I'm not saying anything's wrong with Sabrina's videos. I really just think that it's showcasing an interesting turn in our society. I mean, that episode of Black Mirror kind of says it all. I feel like we're headed towards that direction of, I think it's Nosedive, where she's like trying to buy a house and she doesn't have enough like social media stars or credit scores, whatever. And it's like followers and a social media presence is slowly becoming more important than who you are in real life and what you have in real life. I mean, people will ask you at a job interview how many followers you have. I remember, I remember before I started my YouTube channel, I went to apply for a job at Brandy Melville and the application literally asked me for my follower count and my Instagram handle. So even to get a job, having followers is important. Not for every job. I can't imagine, you know, you're trying to get a residency at a hospital as a, as a surgeon. They're like, how many Instagram followers do you have? Like obviously every industry is kind of different, but like, I think it's interesting how much followers matter. I mean, it's currency at the end, at the end of the day. So another trend that's been coming up on TikTok, which I think has been probably the biggest nuisance for everyone involved is TikTok shop. What is going on with this app? Why does it look like she and an AliExpress had a baby? There's links everywhere. There's, there's a hundred ads. Um, why is there 17 year old girls trying to sell me 35 cent ring lights being like, you guys have to get this. It's amazing. And y'all are falling for your commenting. The TikTok, TikTok shop. Every time I open this app, I feel like my credit card number is about to get stolen. I have been inundated. We, we all have been inundated with TikTok shop ads to the point where it's like, why am I even on this app? Like I could just scroll through Amazon and it'd be the same thing. The only difference is that there isn't some like teenage girl yelling at me saying how this product changed her life. Please buy this mic. If I don't reach a certain amount of sales, they will kidnap my family. Please buy it. TikTok is just becoming a marketplace, which other social media apps are also doing with like the affiliate marketing thing, which is what TikTok shop is. It's affiliate marketing. And so we're constantly being sold to now more than ever. And it feels as though we are just becoming like walking infomercials. Or if you're not making TikTok shop videos, you are just like a huge target for consumerism, affiliate marketing with this 
constant being inundated with ads. So to explain, TikTok shop is obviously a marketplace where you can sell products or retailers can sell products. And so TikTok is incentivizing TikTok users, creators to make videos about the TikTok shop by promoting their videos in the algorithm. So if you make a video promoting a product from TikTok shop, your video is more likely to get boosted by the algorithm because TikTok wants you promoting the shop. And of course, there's also a commission as well. So there's money to be earned from selling products on TikTok. Swell Entertainment has a great video all about this where she explains TikTok shop and how the platform is incentivizing users to use TikTok shop and also the sketchiness of it because there's definitely fake products on TikTok shop for sure. Why would you promote a product that you've been using for years that you like that has a 50 cent, you know, return? when you could be promoting a product that you bought on TikTok shop that has a $2 return, you know? And so of course you're gonna be super excited and boastful about this product that maybe you've barely used, maybe you don't have the longevity of it, maybe you don't know if it's gonna last more than 40 uses or something. You know, there's a lot of questions about, you know, what you're promoting and things like that, but you're, speaking about it in a way that is like you are sponsored. You are speaking about it in a way like you are an influencer. Like the freaking snail cum or whatever, the snail mucus, snail mucin, whatever it is. All right, y'all, I'm tired of people coming on here with fake reviews about the snail mucin and putting the fake link. This is the real virus snail mucin. That is the real bottle. I have it linked in my Amazon storefront and I also have it linked on my viral snail mucin video right here. So yes, I definitely know that this product works for real. My skin looks amazing. This is fake, while this is the real thing. Today we'll be looking at the Kozarek Snail Mucin Essence and how to tell if yours is fake. Once again, the packaging looks almost exactly the same, so you can't tell the difference until you check the actual contents. I've seen so many videos about this snail cum, I don't understand, and everyone's saying it's fake. And I feel like the videos like denouncing fake products on TikTok are just as popular as the actual TikTok shop videos being promoted. And it's just like, add, 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 add. Oh, this is fake, add. This is fake, add. Live stream. <laughs> and it's just like, what am I, what is this app? What has this app become? Like Swell Entertainment said, TikTok is not the same app that it used to be back in 2020. It is a completely different app now. And the user experience is just getting worse and worse. But what's really sketchy about this whole thing is like the people who are making these TikTok shop videos aren't even getting paid that much. Like they're doing influencer work. They're doing brand deals, well, kind of brand deals. Affiliate marketing and brand deals aren't the same thing. But like, I have a ad on this video, I'm getting paid way more than someone who's making a dedicated TikTok for a product, for a brand. And so it's really unfair because it's kind of like they're being taken advantage of because they don't know any better and they just want to boost their videos and TikTok will boost your video if you make a TikTok shop video. So it's like, you know, people will do whatever it takes to go viral and, and TikTok knows that. But it, it's just, it's gotten so extreme. Like, I swear to God, if I hear Chamoy Pickle Kit one more fucking time. Let's try out the Chamoy Pickle Kit. Remember, you can find it in our TikTok shop and get 30% off your order and free shipping. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it'll be something there's this one girl i swear to god i saw her video 20 times in a week i've this has never happened on tiktok where the same video keeps coming up over and over again i don't know what she said i just skip it but i'm like please i don't want the pickles i don't want the pickles like stop like i don't know what to do i had to block her i really i literally had to block this woman i'm so sorry but yeah i mean like most apps they're just trying to make money and i think tiktok has gotten very aggressive with that pursuit if it feels as though TikTok is no longer a place for like fun and silly goofy stuff or even genuine information. It's just ads and it's just it's just people trying to sell you shit. And I, I feel as though the integrity behind content creation is just dwindling, specifically on TikTok, because just like, you know, trends are, are a thing, right? And there's like a copycat nature to TikTok. It's kind of always been that way, but it's like unique to the app like tr internet trends have been around before tiktok but people literally copying pasting other people's videos is what gets them viral there's no push for like innovation or creativity it's like one person does something creative and then the rest of the app does it and it's like really really repetitive and so with the integration of money and affiliate marketing it's seemingly getting worse where there's no point in creativity it's just all about money and people want to be influencers i get it Trust me, I get it. Making money on the internet is like this new thing that everyone wants to get their hands on and I, I 
I get it. It's great in many ways. But what are we going to be left with if there's no content to put the ads on? It's just ads. You know what I mean? And I'm not against ads. Obviously, I have ads for my videos and I need them to live. I need them to pay my bills, but I'm still giving you something of value. I'm still giving you something that you genuinely want to watch. More importantly, aside from like the integrity of content creation, people are going to make fake reviews. They're going to lie about products so they can get paid, so they can get pushed in the algorithm for their own interest, for their own benefit. And so there's like just a serious lack of integrity on all ends with TikTok shop because there's fake products, there's fake reviews, and people aren't making content while using TikTok shop. They're making content for TikTok shop, right? Weird. It's kind of weird. And I, I feel like a lot of these TikTok trends are for money. Like the friggin' NPC livestream trend. Let's talk about that, Miss Pinky Doll. Yes, gang gang, gang gang. Thank you, Louisie. Gang gang, gang gang. Thank you, Louisie. Gang gang, gang gang. Hey, what is wrong with you? Although she wasn't the first one to do it, which again, goes back to the copycat nature of TikTok. There was another creator named Natu Coco, and she was not doing the same exact thing, but a very similar vibe of doing like these emotes and kind of like seemingly cosplaying as a, a character, like a video game character or an NPC. <laughs> So Pinky Doll is definitely the most popular or the most famous person to do this trend. And so she would just get on live for hours and do these emotes depending on what gifts you would give her. So if you give her a rose, she would say one thing like, Ride him, cowgirl! Gang gang! Gang gang! Gang gang! Like, you know, like, it was just, that was her thing. And so these gifts, they cost money. You have to pay to give these gifts to creators and then they earn money from these gifts. She revealed that she has made up to $7,000 a day from these live streams. Like she was making bank. And so everyone was like, oh my God, she's making all this money. Let me do this. And so it became a trend. And like the gifting thing in live streams isn't new. Twitch has been doing that for a while now. But what Pinky Doll has done is she's essentially stripped that concept down to its bare bones. She has made it the most primal, instinctual, animalistic version of these like live streams. So it's not like she's actually saying anything and then doing emotes in between. She's just doing the emotes straight up. And you would think, how is that entertaining for people? How is that captivating? Somehow it is. I don't know. I think it's it has something to do with like the nonstop, just like go, go, go ongoing content of it. I don't know. It's like a weird fascination. It does something to the human brain. That's really fascinating. It's, you know, all the bright colors and the phrases and, and, you know, she's also an attractive woman. And especially for a young brain, that can be very intriguing and captivating. And it's like, you can't look away for some reason. I think kids are definitely attracted to this kind of content. It's great for like an ADHD type of brain because it's, again, just constantly going. And it's, it's kind of mind numbing in a way because it is so hyper stimulating. And I think that may be kind of the, the dangerous part of it is children are like swiping their parents' credit cards to give Pinky Doll $50. <laughs> and they don't know what they're spending money on. They just are like, oh, I wanna see, I wanna see the flower and I wanna hear her say the thing. And I want, you know, like I wanna see my name on the screen. There's a dopamine release that we get when we get that reaction from another person in a completely different place on a screen. Cause it's like, you're like controlling them. And that's kind of the, the intrigue, right? That's the appeal is like, you can control this lady if you just give her something and it becomes this kind of like, addicting thing. I read a comment under a video about this topic and someone said, this is so dystopian. I've always seen TikTok as a direct way to the Wally -E type of life where we're nothing but machines consuming addictive content, but this takes it to another level. I'm seriously worried for humanity, especially since this targets mostly children or teenagers. And I agree, like, I think if you're constantly feeding your brain this sort of content, it'll do something. It, it might mess up your attention span. I mean, our attention span's already shot. It kind of creates this demand of constant entertainment. We demand to constantly be entertained and TikTok has made this so much worse. And now with live streams like this, it's like we can quite literally demand someone to constantly entertain us. If we just throw money at them, if we just, 
throw engagement at them. And, you know, Pinky Doll said, oh, I'm not cosplaying as an NPC. And maybe to her that that wasn't her intention, but she is like she like that's the appeal of the content is that she's tapped into this weird kind of uncanny valley type space where we see that she's human. We know she's human, but she is acting in a non-human human way. She's acting as a non-human character that's trying to appear human, like an NPC or a video game character, but like she's actually a person. Cause you know, there are live streams where like, there are like actual like NPCs or like digital humanoid type characters that we know are like not real and you can interact with them on live streams, but it's not, a, it's not as interesting. Cause it's like, yeah, like it's a digital character. It's not real, but seeing a human being do that and trying to mimic this human non-human behavior is is weird it's it's novel and so i think that's a huge appeal to to the whole thing and again i, I think this kind of trend although it seems like maybe the the npc live stream trend isn't as popular especially now that tiktok is trying to promote tiktok shop i think it still contributes to this lack of integrity when it comes to content creation and we've seen so many copycats of like the npc trend some funnier than others and like people have like made fun of it but like there's this one guy who I see on my For You page a lot who does the same NPC live stream trend in public in the middle of the street in New York City. Oh, no. Meow! It's corn! No. It's corn! It's corn! I Meow! Can't do NPC Nola, I, have I got nothing like a New York City glizzy. I'm blue and I'm a diva. It's corn! It's corn! It's corn! It's corn! I got nothing like a New York City glizzy, bro. <laughs> Just as <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like, oh my god, this is so dystopian. Like, this is weird as fuck. Like, I'm just trying to imagine, like, walking down the street and seeing some guy going, gang gang, gang gang, ride him, cowboy. And I'm just trying to imagine, like, walking down the street and seeing that with my own eyes. And, like, there's just something a bit jarring about a person so, like, tapped into this like virtual world that isn't really real to like generate money out of thin air from children online like I don't know like it's just it's so odd to me and it's like the fact also that you are like going out in public to do this live stream kind of says something right it says like because it's weird to do that in public it's it's strange it's odd and so people are tuning in because of that and so again just like thinning that line between internet reality versus real reality is is like getting a little scary and it's it's promoted and it's incentivized morphing those two things together is what gets you popular on the internet impressing people online is all about how it looks online rather than what it actually looks like in real life which is weird and awkward and strange i hope i'm making sense to me this is also kind of like i'm disillusioned by it all so that's if i'm not coming off as clearly that's why, is because I'm still making sense of it all as I'm making this video, but it is just odd, it's strange. And like, you know, people say, oh, AI is gonna take our jobs, but it's like now humans are trying to be AI. <laughs> it's so weird. The AI uncanny valley dystopian TikTok society that we live in. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the, the title of this video. And I, you know, I'm not gonna go deep into this, but like AI music, AI art, I mean, that's also, I think ties into all of this. And like, and hearing like a singer's voice sing another person's song, I mean, AI AI covers are super popular right now and it's so weird like you can hear Patrick Starr sing my heart will go on or even scarier like a real singer like I mean I've seen a lot of like Ariana Grande covers of just like all sorts of songs sometimes I do sound really realistic and like I'm trying to imagine like what if someone did that to me like if I heard my voice singing friggin I'm proud to be an American by Bruce Springsteen on TikTok like it's jarring it's weird didn't Drake get nominated for a Grammy for an AI song or something like that's weird what is, where, where are we going with this where is it going I don't know I don't think I like where it's going and I don't mean to like sit here and fear monger and be like all conspiratorial like oh AI is gonna we're gonna turn into cyborgs bleh. but I think through this journey that we're having with AI let's not lose our humanity you know let's uh let's still value real life because at the end of the day that's all we have is each other <laughs>
So yeah, uh, this is an interesting video. I really want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think of this whole thing. Uh, are we just doomed for a dystopian future? Are we already in the dystopia? Is it going to get worse? Is it going to get better? Who knows? Let's see. Thank you again to Parade for sponsoring this video. And if you want to check out my music, I Killed My Clone is out now on all streaming platforms as well as on YouTube. There's a whole music video and everything. It's great. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. You can get videos for early access, add free exclusive content and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye